Satyabama Institute of Science and Technology. Hello everyone, I am Dr. B. Shamri Ahmed, Assistant Professor in the Department of Computer Science and Engineering, Satyabama Institute of Science and Technology. I am here today to give a lecture on the topic Inheritance in Java. Before we get into the concept of inheritance, uh, it is a very commonly used term when we use the concept of object oriented programming. So inheritance is a concept in which we will be creating new classes from already existing class. This is one of the major advantages as each and every time we do not have to create a new class. So from the existing class we can create as many number of subclasses that we want and we are also using a uh, different methods and fields in the class. So every time we create a subclass the same same uh, field and methods can be incorporated in the subclass as well. So we can have a few terminologies that we commonly use in the concept of inheritance. So the first one is class. So class is nothing but a set of objects that share similar uh, properties, attributes and characteristics. So the second one is the superclass. The superclass is also called as the base class or parent class. So this is the first class from which we are going to inherit or we are going to create the various subclasses that we want. And the third one is the subclass. The subclass is also called as the child class. So the child class is the one that uses the concept of the previously used class and this is the derived class. The subclass is the derived class that we are going to use in the program. So now there is another important term that we use in the concept of inheritance which is called as extens. So the extens is a keyword using which we are incorporating the uh, base classes properties into the derived class. So if you see in this particular syntax we have class derived class extens base class. So the derived class is the subclass and the base class is the parent class from which we are inheriting the properties. And also there are different methods and fields that can be incorporated from the base class into the child class. So let us see it with an example. So if we see an example here, first we are using the package java.io which is the input output package. So after that we are creating a class in the name of employee. So class employee is the base class that I am using and within the employee I am creating a variable in the name of salary, an integer of salary which is equal to 60,000. So this is my uh, base class as of now. So now I am creating a subclass from the base class which is is the engineer. So engineer is the subclass of the base class employee and I am using the keyword extends over here. So using the keyword extends all the properties of the employee can be incorporated into the subclass of engineer. So here again I am creating another variable named benefits with some value that I am giving here as 10,000. Now these two are base class and the derived class. Now I am moving on to the driver class. So this driver class is nothing but the main class of my program. So here I am creating another class in the name gfg and I am creating my main function. So using uh, java I am using public static void main. And inside that again I am using the class name as engineer, the subclass that I am using here. So engineer is my subclass and I am creating an object for my subclass as E1. So I am giving it as engineer E1 is equal to new engineer. So this is a syntax for creating an object. So once I create an object, I can go to my print statement. So using the system.out.println, I am uh, printing two statements. The first one is a salary and the second one is benefits. Now if we see the benefits is in one subclass and the salary is in the super class. Now what, how are we taking this? Now if you see engineer, engineer is a subclass. However, it extends the property of the base class employee. So the print when you are taking the subclass engineer, it can have both the variables used here as well as here. So in this case you can print both the salary and the benefits and when we are going to print the output using the object E1, we will get the output as salary and benefits. Here since salary is given as 60,000, it prints as 60,000 and here the benefits is given as 10,000 and the output in the benefits is also 10,000. So there is a base class, 
there is a subclass and there is a main class. So, in the main class we are creating a new object. So, in the new object we are creating the variables used in the subclass as well as the base class and printing the output. So, this is the general concept of inheritance. Now, in inheritance we just do not stop with one type. There are four types of inheritance that we can use. So, the first one is single inheritance, multi-level inheritance, hierarchical inheritance and hybrid inheritance. So, we will see them one one by one. So, the first one is a single inheritance. First, let us see this pictorial representation. We have A and B. Consider A as, a, as one class and B as another class. So, A is the super class or base class or parent class and B is the subclass or derived class or child class. So, in this what happens? We have only one level of inheritance. So, the class B inherits the properties of class A. So, since it is only a single level, it is called as a single inheritance. So, the properties and behavior of A can be incorporated in B. So, this is what the uh, pictorial representation uh, gives us. So, now moving on to the example program of it. So, now I am creating a class animal. So, here this class animal is my base class. So, in the base class, I am creating a method void eat. Okay. So, now in void eat, I am also giving out a print statement as eating. Since I am using a method as eat, I am giving some printing statement as eating. So, this is my base class now. Now, moving on to my subclass. Now, I am creating another class dog. Now, if I just create class dog it is again a normal class whereas I am using the term extens using animal. So, this extens acts as an inheritance keyword here and animal is the class that I have created before. So, now this class dog is the subclass of class animal. Now, again I am creating another method bark. I am giving some print state uh, stating it as barking. Okay, now I am going to the main class. Here the main class I am giving it as class test inheritance. So, this ten, test inheritance you can give any name you want. Here I am using it as test inheritance. So, here I am using the main statement, main function followed by dog D. So, now dog is a subclass here. I, from the subclass, I am creating an object say D and giving it as new dog. Okay. So, from this base class, I am creating an object named D. So, now D dot bark and D dot eat. If I say D dot bark, it comes to this method and uh, D dot eat comes to this method. Now, when I am taking the print, that is the output, I will get both the print from the dog as well as from the animal. So, my print, uh, what, what gets printed is barking as well as eating. So, this is a single level of inheritance. So, now this is multi-level inheritance. In the previous one, we just saw one level of inheritance, right? So, in this, there are multi-level. Multi so, here if you see, there are three classes, A, B and C. So, A is the base class, B is an intermediate class, which means it is the child class of A, whereas it is the parent class of C. So, it is an intermediate class and C is a derived class. So, in this, what happens, all the properties of A can be inherited by B, which can further be inherited by C. So, this is the concept of multi-level inheritance. Again, we will see it using an example. So, this is an example of multi-level inheritance. It is a similar example. So, first I am creating the base class as class animal. I am creating a method as void eat and printing the output as eating. I want the output as eating when I am using the class animal. Now, I am creating a subclass dog. The reason I am calling this as a subclass because I am using the keyword extens from my base class animal. So, again here I am using a different method bark and I am giving the print statement as barking. So, this is the base class, this is the subclass. Now, I am creating another subclass which is class baby dog. So, this baby dog extends from this class dog. So, from here we are inheriting here, from here we are inheriting here. So, here if we see the class baby dog, we, are, we am giving a new method as weep and giving the print statement as weeping. So, this is base class, this is a subclass. Further from this we have another uh, subclass. So, now we are moving on to the main statement. So, 
so main class is the test inheritance too. So here when we are giving, we are creating an object again using the baby dog, using this class we are creating an object D. So how are we creating using the syntax baby dog D is equal to new baby dog. So once we give that, we can use this particular method as well as this particular method and the main class is method. So we are using do void D dot weep, D dot weep because D is the object that we have created. So D dot weep, D dot bark and D dot eat. So now the output of this will be all the three weeping, barking as well as eating. So this is the concept of multi-level inheritance. Now moving on to the third type of inheritance which is a hierarchical inheritance. So if you see this picture you have A, B, C, D, four classes we have. However, we have only one base class whereas all the three are in the same level which is derived class 1, derived class 2 and derived class 3. So B, C, D, all the three are derived classes from the main class that is the uh, base class A. So we will see an example for that as well. So again we are creating a class name animal so this is my base class so here i'm creating a method void eat and my print statement i'm giving it as eating now if we see class dog extends animal so class dog is a subclass and the base class of this is animal so once we create that we are creating another method void bark and giving the statement as barking now again if we see we are creating another subclass called class cat extends animal so in the previous multi-level this extends word was from the previous class right so here we are not taking it from the previous class but we are taking it from the main base class okay main class as in the base class so here i am creating another subclass class cat extends animal so this is another derived class just like how we created a class dog so again here we have a method which is void mu and the printing statement for that is mewing now moving to the main function so in the main function now we are again creating an object in the name of cat c so we are using this particular class so cat c we are giving it as new cat so that is an object creation now c dot mu that is this particular method we are using along with this particular method so for cat when we are using we are giving it as c dot mu and for eat we are giving it as c dot eat now the output will be mewing as well as eating so this is the concept of hierarchical inheritance so this is another type of inheritance which is hybrid inheritance so if we see this we have a b c and d so there are four classes here if we take it as such a will be a base class, B and C can be subclasses, D can further be a subclass or it can take any other form. However, we want it, it is a combination of the other type of inheritances. Therefore, it gets the name hybrid inheritance. So using these four types of inheritances, we have certain advantages and disadvantages as well. So the first advantage is code reusability. So when we are going to create a new class from an already existing class, we don't have to again and again initialize them. So all the properties of the previous class is already inherited in the subclass that we are creating. So the code reusability is a plays a predominant role because we don't have to again and again give it in the form of a code. The second one is abstraction so abstraction means for example if we want to infer only certain data that alone we can do for example in the hierarchical uh, inheritance we saw class dog as well as class cat however we wanted to print only class cat so in that way we can eliminate whatever is not needed so that is another advantage of inheritance so the third one is class hierarchy so class hierarchy like we saw one after the other we can arrange it in a hierarchical order and polymorphism polymorphism means it can take many forms so instead of doing it again and again from one particular concept we can have many different types of inheritance that we can incorporate depending upon the need of the user. So these are all the advantages. So there are also disadvantages. So the first disadvantage is the complexity. So without uh, knowing the exact concept of inheritance, that is without the proper knowledge of how we can use the extens keyword, it is difficult to 
code it in the form of a Java program. So the complexity is still there when we are using the concept of inheritance and also tight coupling. Tight coupling means for example we are having a super class and a base class. Supposing you want to modify the properties of the parent class alone, the, the base class alone it is difficult to do because it will also have the reflection in the subclass. So this will be a problem uh, which is called as tight coupling. So these are all the disadvantages of uh, inheritance. So I hope this session was useful and gave you some insight about the topic of inheritance. Thank you.